Hello there and welcome again. My name is Dr. Lopez. Let's discuss carbamazepine. Carbamazepine is a very important mood stabilizer, especially for the board. It has a high drug to drug interaction. It is a, has a warning for the Asian population because of ignorant mucidosis. And there are many aspects that carbamazepine that you need to know for your PMH and P board certification. So let's dive right into it. This is our roadmap. We are about in the, about the middle of our module one series. Now we will discuss carbamazepine. Okay, so carbamazepine, just like valpar acid, had a box, black box warning of liver and hepatitis, right? Liver toxicity and uh, hepatitis. So carbamazepine has a block of black box warning, and that is for agranulocytosis and a plastic, a plastic anemia, anemia. So any drugs that has a black box warning it's important information so when we say agranulocytosis we are talking about the decrease in white blood cells okay a plastic and anemia patients would present with pallor fatigue headaches fever bleeding no bleeding okay bleeding of the gum skin rash and shortness of breath. So, Steve Johnson syndrome, particularly in the Asian individual, you have to screen for the HLA-B1502, Ali, before initiating this drug. This is super high yield, super important that you understand. Steve Johnson syndrome, you have to screen the patients before you prescribe carbamazepine if they are of Asian population. Okay, so it's highly associated with carbamazepine induced Steve Johnson syndrome. Always check for pregnancy status by getting your HCG. And in terms of the board. That's anyone, anyone of any woman of age 12 to 50. You must add, or you should add to your practice, adding a folic acid because it supports neurotube development during the first uh, months of pregnancy. Okay, and that's the quantity there, 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. It's an important consideration. Now, when you hear carbamazepine, think of the three A's. You see carbamazepine, the first A, second A, and third A, right? So the first A is for a plastic anemia. The second A is for agranulocytosis, and the third A is for Asian population. So when you see carbamazepine, you will remember the three A's, a plastic anemia, a granulocytosis, and the Asian population. Now, how to remember all this? Carbamazepine, you can memorize by carbon, Z for the fatigue, and pain. So that's color, pale, agranulocytosis, rash, bleeding of the gum, a plastic anemia, Stop the med, right? If you see any of those symptoms, A for the Asian, vulnerability to Steven Johnson syndrome, disease for the fatigue, pregnancy, neurotube defect, it can cause neurotube defect, uh, I for increasing SOVs, shortness of breath, nosebleed, and elevated temperature. But mostly know that uh, these facts here are very, very 
important and you should really memorize all this here about carbamazepine. Black box warning right, for agranulocytosis, a plastic anemi anemia for the Asian population. It's associated with Steve Johnson syndrome. Know which lab to get screened for before you give this medication. Always check for pregnancy status and the three A rules, a plastic anemia, Asian population, and a granulocytosis, which is decrease of the white blood cell count. Questions could be something along the lines of, you notice a patient had a fever, had a bleeding of the gums, or had perhaps bleeding of the nose, what would be your next action? So the next action should be to stop the medication, collect gloves. That's just an example, okay? So the therapeutic level is between 4 to 12 uh, for seizure control. Liver enzymes is an inducer, so carbon myosopine may decrease the efficiency of other drugs. Remember the inducers and the inhibitor concept covered earlier today. So think about uh, the CNX uh, side effects, which is dizziness, uh, drowsiness, and ataxia are common. Monitor and adjust the, do the doses needed. And hyponatremia. What other medication cause hyponatremia? Remember we talked about hyponatremia and lithium? Well, it also can cause hyponatremia. Carbamazepine can cause a decrease in serum sodium level, monitor electrolyte level, particularly during the treatment. So let's do a check on learning. In the Asian population, which medication among these options would raise the most concern? Depakote, carbamazepine, Lithium or Lamictal? And why? Well, carbamazepine is an anticonvulsant associated commonly, commonly used to treat epilepsy and bipolar disorder. In the Asian population, there is an increased risk of developing Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrosis. Skin, severe skin reactions that can be life-threatening due to this risk, it would be likely be the medication that rises the most concern in the Asian population. So let me clear something up here. So Steven Jones syndrome can also be caused by lamictal. lamictal. However, if the question asks you, in the Asian population, which of the following medications would you be most concerned with Steve, Steven John syndrome? Then it would be carbamazepine because it's lithium. If carbamazepine wasn't here, and the question would be a 65 years old, blah, 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 taking a medication and it's causing Steven John syndrome, which one would you likely to be the cause of the Steven Johnson syndrome, you pick Lamictal. If it has Asian in the question, pick Carbamazepine. If it doesn't, pick Lamictal. Okay? Because both of them can cause Steven Johnson syndrome. All right, another interesting fact for, uh, uh, for your own knowledge and pearl during your clinicals when starting Lamictal, we start in a very low dose. So the Lamicto dose for bipolar would be anywhere between 150 to 200 milligrams there. Now you start at 25 and then you wait two weeks and then you increase to 50. Why? Because it's Steven Johnson syndrome. So you have to start Lamicto very slow. Wait two weeks, double the dose. Wait two weeks, double the dose. Wait two weeks, double the dose until you get to the to the level of two hundred, just about, and continually to reassess your patient. Okay, just mention this because I've seen a lot of people starting lamictal 
at the 150, 160, and that's very dangerous. Okay? Don't be the one. I'll see you on the next module.